Okay, so the next topic is critical mass. Well, we typically hear about the chicken and egg problem、uh, in many places, but especially also in a platform. Well, what's this? Suppose imagine that you are running a platform. Okay, if there are already a lot of users, then there will be more and more. But then there is no user at all at the beginning, right? Who should be the first one to join? Well, that's a question we need to face. So somehow, if you are having a platform, you know, well, if there are sellers, sellers is going to attract buyers. Or if you have a lot of buyers, buyers are going to attract sellers. So should you first get some sellers, or should you first get some buyers, or what's the order? What's the the way to do this? That's the chicken and egg problem for platforms. In that case, the number of users distinguishing these two situations are called the critical mass. So critical mass is a term regarding the number of users. We hope to reach the critical mass so that afterwards, uh, users ex uh, attract new users. So if we draw a graph to show something like this, if this is the number of users, and this is also the number of users, okay, then basically when you acquire a few users and eventually goes up, then. This particular um this particular stage is called your critical mass, okay. So you may imagine, well, how how what do we mean by having the two axes as the same thing? Well, that's just uh conceptual, all right. So when you reach a certain stage, before that the accumulating speed is not so fast. But after that, you are going to get to a new stage. Then we call that particular、um, cutoff point as your critical mass. Okay. So if you don't feel comfortable, you may make this as revenue or something else. Okay. So that may be again the similar concepts. So the thing is that we now know how do we mean by critical mass. But in practice, there are of course many difficult questions to answer. For example. How may we reach the critical mass?、Mm, well, that's a very difficult question, and there's no way for me to teach you how to reach the critical mass from every different platforms. That's impossible, right? But still, I'm going to create. I'm going to give you some general suggestions, like the three. So one very typical way to do this is to create high standalone benefits. Why is that?、I'll、recall our formula. Stand alone benefit plus network benefit minus price should be non-negative. So for some people to enter your platforms, so at the beginning you don't really have a lot of users. So at the beginning, network benefit is pretty much zero. You still want to sell some part of your products, right? So suppose this is positive. Then you really need to create some standalone benefit so that this equation may be satisfied. All right. So if standalone benefit is positive, there will be some users.、Uh, at least you need to create that for some users. Then some users would join, and then they were going to create some network benefits. So for some others, and then other people would join. So. Maybe we need some examples to show you what we mean by standalone benefits. So, for example, consider those services like Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive, and so on and so on. So, for these services, we do agree that they have network benefits, right? For example, for Google Drive, one specific reason to use Google Drive is to share folders, share files with your friends. With your collaborators, or in many cases, edit the same document for all of us, right? So it's really good to use Google Drive with a lot of friends. But even if you use Google Drive by yourself, that still creates some benefits for you, right? You may back up your files. You may sync your files at different places. So Google Drive is a is an example showing you that. If you do have standalone benefit, 
that's going to attract some people, even if no other people are using this service. Okay, so that's one example about standalone benefits. Okay, so the next thing is called subsidization. Well, what's that? So at the beginning, you don't have network benefit, right? Maybe you also find it difficult to create standalone benefit. For example, um, Uber Eats. Okay, if you really don't have any supplier, then there is no way for you to attract any consumer. So if that's the case, then what do you do? Well, the last thing you may do is to create, for example, a negative price or just free. So subsidization means to give discounts to users. And that users may be sellers or buyers, maybe consumers or suppliers. So, for example, at the beginning, when Uber、uh, enters the city, for example, no one wants to use that. So Uber is going to give discounts to、uh, potential consumers, saying that, hey, if you sign up and use our app, then we're going to give you two hundred and fifty dollars as your、um, some some money. You may use that to、uh, to take Uber, for example. Okay, it's going to also talk to us、uh, to the initial set of drivers, saying that okay, if you join Uber before this particular date, we're going to give you additional bonus, something like that. So those subsidization are good strategies for growth. Okay, because originally you have no users, you need to grow. So maybe one direct way is to give out money. Well. You may consider subsidization as a good way, or maybe you consider it as a bad way. It's good because it's very direct and, in some sense, useful at least for the short term. But it's also somehow bad because if you want to do subsidization, typically you don't want to do that forever. Okay, subsidization in this sense is a way for you to hopefully reach your critical mass. You don't want to do that forever, but In many cases, once you get to the critical mass, you you cancel your subsidization. Then there may becomes a new competitor creating subsidizations. And if previously all your consumers are attracted by your subsidization, then when you don't do that and some others do does it, your consumers goes away. So whether subsidization is really good, uh, again, it's case by case. Okay, it may be good, but typically we don't hope to just do this as the only way to attract consumers. The last thing is regarding focus. So what's that? Well, typically we hope to create network benefits to attract consumers, right? But the thing is that if at the beginning you open your service to everyone in the world. Then that's going to lose your focus, and it's hard for you to acquire consumers. It's hard for you to create positive network benefits among users. So one example can be Facebook. Okay. So for Facebook, I guess many people know the story. Originally, when Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook in his dormitory. So that service is opened only for、uh, Harvard student and Boston College students. Okay, so only two universities,、uh, only students in the two universities are allowed to use Facebook. Well, I'm not sure whether Mark Zuckerberg are so smart and know what he is doing, but no matter he does this,、uh, he did this、uh, in purpose or just by luck. That's useful. Why is that? Because at that moment, for each evening, maybe Facebook can only accommodate three hundred or three thousand users to be online at the same time. Okay, the capacity must be limited. If you open that service to everyone in the world, from Berkeley, Stanford, Harvard, NTU, whatever, it's very likely that when you have a single person here, from NTU. You join Facebook at that moment, and then you see you know no one on Facebook. Then you will feel sad, and then you will leave. And if you really leave Facebook, even if someday Facebook is really good, and Facebook asks you to join again, it's just even harder than finding a new customer, right? So it would be better if at the beginning the service is only 
provided to a limited group of consumers. Regarding marketing, it's easier, right? If you are a Harvard student, you see a service provided to all over the world. You, you don't feel anything uh, surprising. But if you are a Harvard student and you see that this service is particularly uh, reserved only for Harvard students, then it makes sense to look at this product uh, more. All right? So that's one thing. So regarding network externality, that's also the same thing as I just mentioned. If you only want to serve this small group of consumers, it's more likely that they know each other and they feel beneficial being connected. All right? So that's why we say focusing can be a reasonable starting strategy. Suppose you want to do a C2C marketplace, all right? Should you at the beginning sell, allow all sellers to sell all kinds of products? Or should you at the beginning focus on just one category of products like used books, used stationaries, used bicycles, for example? If you do have a focus, say used bicycles, then when you distribute the information regarding your platform to consumers, if someone has a used bicycle to be sold, he will consider he or she will consider your platform more instead of a general platform. All right. So that's uh, we. I'm not saying that as long as you do this, you are going to have a successful business, but at least. When you are thinking about starting your own business, this seems to be reasonable uh, growth strategies, right? Either you focus on standalone benefits, try to create some positive standalone benefits, or maybe you want to do some subsidization to cut down the price, or maybe you want to do focusing to help you accumulate or to help you create network benefits.